BFD3 from F Expansion really gives us the ability to produce a professional sounding drum sound right within BFD3 without needing anything else because we have plenty of effects in here. We can of course adjust our uh, room microphones, our ambient microphones, all kinds of different tweaks that we can do, including a bunch of sins and uh, whatnot. But some people, a lot of people actually, still like to mix drums, like they recorded the drums themselves and then they want to mix with their own plugins in their DAW. And we can break out all of these drum channels really easily uh, right here in BFD3. So right up top, I'll just show you how to do this really quick for those wanting to know, and then we'll take a little bit of a deeper look here in a minute. So if I want to break out these drums, which right now they're all playing through BFD3, you see, everything's coming through BFD3. What if I want to break that out to individual channels? Well, to do that, we'll come down here to our mixer, right down here to the bottom, and we'll just click on the name. These are the plugin outputs for BFD3. Aux will be within BFD3 and sidechain, of course, within BFD3 here. And since we're on our kick channel here, and of course kick is a mono source, we'll just choose mono for now. Now you don't necessarily have to choose mono, but you, you uh, could choose stereo if you wanted to. But a general rule is that you'll just choose mono if it's a mono source, generally. So we have these three set up right now, mono one, mono two, and mono three. So if I play back now, we're not really hearing these, we're hearing them still in our ambient channels, right? But we're not hearing the direct. So let's go ahead and set this up. We have set up our kick, our snare, and our hi-hat to be split out from BFD3, and we will record those into our DAW. So I already have my tracks created that I need here. We'll just use one, two, and three. We could, of course, go ahead and, and name those if we want, but we'll go here to the input, come down here to plugin, insert, and since we chose our mono one, we'll choose mono one for that input. For this one, we'll come down to plug in again, BFD3, and we want mono two, and this is going to be our hi-hat, mono three. Now I can just monitor these channels. You can see that signal is coming through, right? So if I wanted to record that, of course we just arm our tracks here in Pro Tools, and of course it'd be a good idea to actually name these first, so all of our clips are named uh, correctly. There's our kick. There's our snare, and there's our hats. Okay, so we have all of those armed. We have them routed correctly. We'll go ahead and record here in Pro Tools. Okay, so what we recorded there was of course just the kick, snare, and hi-hat. Everything else was still being processed within BFD3. But right here is what we recorded. So I'll just solo these three. There it is. So then of course you're free to come in here to your plugin list and load whatever plugins you want and mix your drums as you would if you had recorded this kit uh, yourself. So now we'll go ahead and move on and dive in a little bit deeper. Okay, so let's take a little bit of a deeper look at this. That first part, of course, was just for those who wanted just a quick hit, just to know how to do that. And this is how you do it. You just come down here and choose either mono or stereo. It doesn't technically matter. Uh, but again, general rule, it's a mono source, so you're probably going to want to choose a mono out. Okay, but you can definitely choose stereo. Uh, you may want to choose stereo for a couple of reasons. If you have certain effects on, on something, uh, reverbs, right? Or of course, if the channel is stereo, you'll probably want it to be stereo. You see we have these icons right here showing this is a mono, this is mono. Now I can click this and make it stereo. Now we're still gonna have a, a center image, which I should probably show that here. Let's get rid of what we recorded here. So here's our kick. Let's go ahead and put this back out on, say mono one. We'll just record right here. We already have this input set correctly. Just hit record. Okay, take that off, on mute. We'll come down here to channel nine, which is a stereo track, plug in. We'll come to the stereo two. And on this case, I'll have to change this to stereo. There we go. And we'll go ahead and arm that track. All right, there we go. Close BFD three for now. So we're still going to have a tight uh, center image, being that this is indeed a mono source. So we'll come in here to insight just so you can see that. 
So right now we will just solo our stereo kick. Nice tight center image. Right, but we also have things like bleed that are going on back there. Right? If we look at the image here for our mono kick, right? Still a nice tight center image, right? So I don't want to tell you that you have to use mono on a mono source. You probably will, but just be aware that you can, of course, uh, choose a stereo output for a mono source. And you can always change your sources to stereo just by clicking this button right there. And again, that can really come into play if you have certain effects on there, such as, uh, like I said, reverbs and things that sort of open up that space. Now, a place where you would definitely want uh, stereo out would, of course, be a stereo channel like, like our ambient mix here, because, of course, we have a bunch of different uh, microphones in here. And we wouldn't want this channel, if we're going to split just this channel out, we wouldn't want this to be mono, more than likely. We would probably want it to be stereo. So one other reason why you may, if you just choose to want a stereo track, let's, let's go with our hi-hat here. I'm going to solo our hi-hat, and we'll just play that. So now I have this panned off to one side, right? So if I come down here to our master, we'll put this out on, we'll just say mono 2. And we'll come back to our hat channel here. Let's change this to mono 2. Hit record here. And this is going out mono, even though we have this panned all the way to the left, you'll see what happens here. So let's go ahead and find my transport again. And let's go ahead and record that. That's enough. So you can see it's right down the middle. And if we play back here in Pro Tools, coming right down the middle. So then I would have to pan that in my DAW, just like I had recorded you know, a real hi-hat with one microphone pointed uh, directly at it. Right? Now, if for some reason you wanted to record that and print that panning, you can do that as well. So let's just use this track here. We'll just leave it on the stereo two. We'll have our output now for our hi-hat be stereo two. All right, we'll record this track. And now you'll see how weighted this is going to be to one side. There we go. And if you take a look now, you can see that is completely weighted uh, to the left. We have nothing here coming on in on the right channel on our stereo track. I could try to, of course, pan that in my DAW, but I just want you to be aware uh, that may be one reason why you want to print in stereo, even though you may have a mono source. If you want to print the panning, uh, you can do that by taking that out a stereo channel. Okay, so the next thing is, Let's say that we want, let me go and fold this up for now. Let's say we want our kick and all of our mono channels here, all the way down to our ride. Instead of coming in here and saying, all right, come down to plug in and setting these up individually, say one there and coming back here and saying two there, right? We can actually do this automatically. And there's a couple ways you could actually do this. Right now we have eight. Let me go and get two more mono tracks so we have 10 let me create that so now we have a total of 10 mono tracks and if i want to increment our output automatically from 1 to 10 instead of having to come in and manually choose that here in pro tools i could hold down alt control which would be alt and i believe command on mac then we'll click our uh, input source there. Now I can release those buttons, come down here to plug in, insert, and we're going to start with the mono 01, click that and you'll see all of these down here change. So one, two, three, four, five, you can see, uh, where was six? There's six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And that affected only our, our mono tracks. Okay. Because it was all of this, the uh, same type. Let me change this one here just so you can see that. Okay. So that changed all of those. Now, what if I had a bunch more mono tracks? Well, in that case, it would have changed those two, and maybe you don't want to do that. So let's say I went from kick down to, let's just say, five here. I just held down shift and selected all those tracks. So now what I'll do is hold down alt, 
and shift and alt and shift basically means all selected because we have a selection here. So all selected, alt, shift, then control. Now I'll click my input path selector. I can release all three buttons. Come down here to plug in. Now this time I'll choose, let's just say 11 and boom. So now I increment 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and it didn't touch any of our other mono tracks. So six, seven, eight, one, two, those were left unaffected and they're still assigned to what we assigned them to previously. So just hold down alt control. Now I'm down here to plug in. Now just choose one here. So now I have one through 10 available, good. And also I should point out that these are mono tracks, but you can also choose the stereo output as you can see up here. So BFD3 S that's stereo, O2 is the channel, dot L is left, okay? So because it's a stereo channel from within BFD3 here, if we have that output assigned to some channel, we could use two different mono tracks one side receiving the left, one side receiving the right on two mono tracks instead of doing one stereo track, okay? So now we have our track set up in Pro Tools. We can also quickly change the output of our tracks within BFD3. Make sure I select my first track here. Then I'll come down to our right one, hold down Shift and select, and that should have selected all of those. Sometimes it doesn't. It gets a little buggy sometimes, but once they're all selected, I'll come down to my last track here. And now I'll hold down Alt and Shift here in BFD3. Now I'll click my output. So I'll click the word master in this case. And I want all these to be mono. So I'll choose mono one. You can see one, two, and these here had a little bug for some reason. And then here's three. Okay, so again here, let's try this one more time. Select this track. We'll come down here. Shift select this track. So now they're all selected. Come down to the, our last selected track. Alt, shift, click on our output. Come to mono. I'm still holding down the buttons, by the way. Choose one. And there we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to nine. And you have to do that from the last selected track. Otherwise, it can mess up the uh, channel selection. The next shortcut we have for sequentially, uh, quickly numbering or uh, assigning our outputs is by using the channel context menu and the auto assign outputs function. So for that, we can right click a channel here, right click it down here, right click it up here. And what you'll see here is we have auto assign outputs direct, auto assign outputs mix down, auto assign outputs master, and auto assign outputs what you see is what you get. And the auto assign output function will probably be the uh, function that you use more often than say the shift select. Okay, so let's go ahead and check these out. What we'll do is let's say right click and we'll come up here to auto assign direct. Click that, make sure we choose okay. Now it doesn't look like much happened on our kick and our snare, but if we open these up, you can see we have multiple microphones within this, basically a kick aux or the master channel uh, for the kick. So usually these three feed this one uh, master kick channel. So now by using the auto assign outputs direct, it takes all of the microphones here. So in this case, three, and assigns them one, two, and three. Then of course, nothing here on the kick. Same for a snare here. You see snare, snare top, snare bottom, snare side. Four, five, and six there, and then automatically assigns these here. Seven, eight, nine, all the way up to 14. If we open up our ambient mix here, then we have our stereo channels automatically assigned in a couple models here, and it skipped over those. And right here is an aux channel. It didn't touch that one. All right, so that's another real quick way for you to assign your outputs sequentially really quick. Uh, we could also right click and choose auto assign outputs master. And that's basically going to reset us back to uh, how it will be set up uh, by default. So now those kicks are again feeding our master kick channel there. Our snares are again feeding uh, the master snare. Same thing for our mics are now all feeding the ambient mix. All right. Uh, another one that you might use is the what you see is what you get. So right click and what you see is what you get. Okay. And now it assigns, here's mono one. It didn't touch the actual mic channels here. It just changed our aux basically, our, our kick master. Okay. So these three are still feeding uh, that kick there. Signed all those for us. Same thing. Uh, it did assign a uh, stereo two for our reverb channel there. If we open up our ambient mics. Now each of these mics 
is still feeding the ambient mix. So we won't actually have these separate uh, microphones in our DAW if we recorded this way. We just have this one, just this one ambient mix channel. All right. Put this back on master. But if I then say open this up, okay, so we can see all this, then I'll right click and do what you see is what you get again. And now it's actually going to assign those uh, direct outputs since we can actually see them. So just keep, uh, you know, keep that in mind whenever you're assigning things, make sure you have them assigned correctly before you go to recording your DAW. And you can, of course, read about this here in the VFD3 operation manual. We can see that the auto assign outputs direct. Okay, that assigns the output selector for all individual microphones to discrete outputs. And that includes the drum mic, sub mic channels and ambient mic channels, which we saw, right? An existing output selector assignment to aux channels and parent mix channels, okay, are lost, which again, we already saw that. So of course, that's going to allow us to easily transmit all drum and ambient mic channels to our host or DAW for further mixing. And then we have the mix down option. So that's intended to be used with aux channel submixes of drums. So if you happen to have uh, a submix of a bunch of auxes, which we'll look at later on with a, a giant kit with a bunch of auxes, you could use this feature there, you know, right click and do say mix down. And we're not going to see nothing there and put this back to master. Okay. So this is an aux there. Let's right click and do mix down. And now the mix down here, it assigned mono one for a kick for snare. Again, didn't change the actual mics uh, within it. And right here, you can see it, it assigned uh, stereo two there, assigned stereo three for everything here. It didn't actually change the actual microphones and actually didn't touch these uh, drums here. And then we have the master, which we just, uh, just use, assigns all channels to their default output selector, effectively sending all signals to the master channel. And as we just saw, the kick, snare drum, sub mics are routed to their parent drum mix channel. Same for the ambient mics, whatnot. And then the, what you see is what you get. So this function sequentially assigns the output of each direct channel to a mono output and any bus, aux, or ambient mic channel to a stereo output, which we have already seen. So again, just keep in mind uh, what you are choosing because if you want each of these routed individually, make sure you choose an option that will route them individually and you're not just routing, say, just, you know, just a kick. Uh, just your master kick or just your master snare or just your master ambient mix. Make sure you're getting all the channels that you want split out. So that is our auto assign output function. You can just right click a channel and choose whichever of these options uh, will work best for you. All right, so now that we know how to assign our outputs, we'll go ahead and do that here. Here we go, so we have all of our outputs uh, set up now. We hit play, we don't really hear much. We're just really hearing those ambient channels there. So I can come down here into Pro Tools and I need to actually set these outputs up again. So we already know how to do that. Hold down Alt and Control. Instead of just the select that I'm just gonna do all of them. And we'll just start with one. So I should assign those uh, correctly. So now I can come down here and arm all of these tracks. Of course, we could do that a quicker way, but I'll just do it manually there. And we'll go ahead and record. There we go. So now we have our tracks all split out into individual tracks right here in Pro Tools that we're free to uh, mix however we want. And I just held down Alt and clicked that record button, by the way, to turn them all off at once. All right, and these are all mono channels, so it's all right down the middle. So then I could come here. So here's our toms. Of course, I would probably want to name that, but we'll do that later on. All right, come in here. Let's pan this one over this way. This one a bit this way. This one over this way. There you go. And then of course you come in and add whatever plugins you want and start your mixing. Some of these different items will have this little flyout. So we have different microphones on our kick. And as you can see, these are actually being routed to our mono kick channel, okay? So we have a kick in mic, kick out mic, kick sub mic. Well, guess what? We can actually record those into our DAW 
separately as well. If you don't want to record this whole channel to just one kick channel, you could actually have all of these mics, you know, broken out. Same for our snare here. Maybe you want different channels in your DAW so you have further mixing options you know, down the road and you want your snare top, your snare bottom, your snare side, okay? Well, you can do that as well. Same exact, uh, same exact thing. So come down here to kick in this case. I would choose mono. You, would, you probably wouldn't want stereo, but again, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You can absolutely use stereo if you want. But we'll say mono one there. Then we can do mono two here. Then we can do mono three there. Now in this case, I'm gonna have to change the names, otherwise we'll get confused here. So now we have broken these three out. We can fold that up. Make sure I got those routed correctly. Yes, I do. Now what I wanna make sure I don't do is have other things going to that mono two and mono three channels. Uh, you can do that, by the way, if, if you want multiple things going to the same channel in your DAW, you can of course assign the same output here in BFD three. But right now we'll just go with our kicks. These are already set up correctly. One, two, and three for our inputs for these channels. Just record those. I'm also going to, before we do that here, because we've already seen the record process, should probably get rid of this stuff here. There we go. So we'll just record over this. Okay. So what we recorded there was just the kicks. Everything else you heard was coming through either BFD3 or you were just hearing that ambient mix. Okay. So there's our kick in, kick out, kick sub. And like I said, of course, you could do this to your snare and to anything else that you want to uh, break out. All right, then you can mix uh, however you want, put whatever plugins you want on each different, uh, different microphone there and mix just like you had recorded three different microphones on, on your kick drum. Now let's look at our ambient mix or our room microphones. Now our room microphones are a stereo channel. You'll probably want to leave it in stereo, but it's definitely fine if you want to output it as a single mono track. You can do it, but most of the time you'll probably want to leave that on stereo and you'll probably want your output to be uh, stereo as well. So let's go ahead and choose stereo here. We'll go with stereo two, okay? And we'll come down to a stereo track, or if you wanted to, here's a mono track. We could come in here and say plug-in, BFD three, and we could choose since we down here we have the stereo two out, we could choose stereo two left for this mono channel for the left side of that signal, and then to another mono channel, and we could do the right side. So if I monitored just those two things, you can see we come out here, and I could pan them however I want in my DAW. Right? But what we'll do instead is just do one stereo channel. There it is. We could record that. Of course, we could record all of this at once, by the way. You don't have to do this one at a time. I just want to save time here. There we go. So now we have our room microphones right here that we can mix with whatever plugins that we want. Solo that. Okay, but what you may want to do, if you don't want just that one uh, sort of ambient mix, uh, room microphones, uh, room microphone channel to mix with, maybe you want everything split out. Okay, well, hey, guess what? You can do that as well. Same thing we did with our kick or our snare there. Just use that fly out menu right here. Fly that out, open that up. And then you can choose different outputs. So here's our overheads. Now this is a stereo channel. So on this, in this case, you probably want to do stereo. This room microphone, it looks like we have two different room microphones. So we have two different room microphones right here. So again, you may want to do stereo, you may want to do mono. Again, completely up to you, but we'll do stereo, okay? And this is another stereo. So I'll choose stereo. Again, I'm choosing stereo just because we have these two microphones right here. 
coming through this one channel. You could do mono if you want. So this is a mono, as you can see, mono one, mono two, mono three, comp one, comp two. These are all mono. Now they're currently muted, but I can unmute them here and turn them up. Turn these up. These are down too. Turn those up too. Just so you have more mixing options uh, later. Now here, maybe I want to go mono. Could go stereo, but let's just say mono. I'm just sort of doing uh, random here. Assignments. I think I missed number nine, but that's okay. 12 there. And 13 there. So there we have a full mix set up there. Now I probably want to change this one here just to the master. It wouldn't matter because nothing's being ported to it. I just don't want to get confused there. So if we play now. Okay. So then we can come down here and, of course, name our track. So this is our overhead track. Let's just start right here and call it overheads. Next track is our room. Mics. Next track is our M3. Hit OK there. And then we'll come up to some mono tracks here. And let's just start right here. And this is going to be mono one, mono two. And we'll just leave the rest and we won't record those just so we can save time. Of course, you could take the time to. Uh, set all of this up. So our mono one needs to be on eight. Mono two is going to be on 10. Plug in. Here we go. This is going to be eight. This is going to be 10. Then our overheads will be on stereo two, which we already have set up. Our room microphones will be stereo three from BFD three. This will be stereo four. Right there. All right. We can record all of these at the same time. Record, record, record. There we go. I'll close that down. And. There we go. Don't alt click that. Just solo our microphones here. Pull these down. All right. Well, there you go. Of course, we could set this up and mix it. Uh, mix our microphones however uh, you want. Throw plugins on there, just the plugins that you want. And mix just like you had recorded, you know, a drum kit uh, in your room. Of course, you'd mix that with your, you know, your direct, your direct tracks. Okay, let's let's talk about effects now because as I mentioned up top, BFD3 gives you lots of effects uh, to use within BFD3, so you don't uh, necessarily have to mix with other plugins. You have plenty of effects to use you know, right within right within BFD3. So we have effects on our kick. We have some effects on the snare, on the hi hat, the toms, so on and so forth. So whenever we record this into Pro Tools in this case, or whatever DAW you're using, of course it's recording the sound of the effects as well, right? And just to prove that, just so you can really hear it, I'll throw a flanger on this kick. First, let me come in here and make sure these are going to the kick channel, just so we don't get confused. Kick, 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 and kick. Uh, because the, these individual drums may or may not have effects on them. Just the kick out does in this case. Okay. So keep in mind, you can also have effects within a, an aux channel is what this really is here. Uh, as you can see, if we go down to our output selector aux, kick is our aux, which this is the master channel with which these three uh, by default are going to feed into. If I was pulling this out at say mono one, okay, there would be no effects in our DAW, whenever we recorded this microphone for this uh, this kick, there would be effects for this one. But if something was running through our main kick aux, then all of these would be uh, recorded, okay? So that's why I need to switch this back to kick so you can 
actually hear this. Let's go back to our kick channel here. Turn up the feedback. All right, so you'll definitely hear that, right? So if we have effects on this, just so you can hear it, and we come into record, record that kick. Right? That's going to be on the actual file that we uh, that we record. Okay, so if you're going to mix in your DAW and you want to mix with raw samples, you need to turn off the effects first before you record, uh, you know, into your DAW, right? So we could come up here and turn those off, turn those off, turn those off, but there's a faster way here in BFD3. Just click this master bypass button for our effects. Click that and they'll automatically uh, be bypassed. So let's put an input on this. effects make sure this one is on and turn this back here there you go bypass back on all right so if you happen to come into bfd3 load up a preset or load up sort of a basic sort of a scratch sound for your drums uh, using effects a quick and easy way to just turn all those all of those off instead of coming in here to each different channel and turning things on or off or coming here and turn turn things on or off uh, you can just hit that button and then go ahead and port everything out wherever you want it and then record that into your DAW and then you'll get just the completely raw uh, sound make sure all of our effects are on if you turn them off individually of course you'll have to come back in and turn them on uh, individually Another option, of course, is to come into each individual channel that you may have effects on, and maybe instead of bypassing everything, maybe you just bypass maybe all the ones on the kick, maybe all the ones on the, on the tom, or maybe you want to leave the effects on, and maybe you just want to turn some of them off. So maybe you like the overall EQ shape, and you'll, you know you want that overall EQ shape, so there's no reason to turn this off, right? But maybe you want to get rid of the, the uh, compressor and maybe the post EQ, right? So you can leave some of them on, some of them off. Just be aware that if they're on, if your effects are on and you're pulling from a channel uh, that's, that's being output into your DAW, then those effects are going to be printed along with, uh, along with the drum sound or kit piece sound. Okay. So if you want full natural, full raw, then just bypass everything. Otherwise, you can turn on or off uh, just the things that you want. We have this channel here called Rev 1. What is that? That's not an instrument. We don't have a Rev 1 up here, right? Well, this is a send channel. If we click on this button here that says sends, you can see that we're sending, in this case, just the snare to this reverb channel. We come up here to our effects, and this channel is selected. You can see we have a reverb on that. You can of course record that into your DAW as well, or you know you may not want to, you know because if you're going to mix completely within your DAW, uh, especially if you're putting out just raw samples, you're bypassing all the effects, right? Then you may want to create your own reverb send uh, with your own reverb uh, in your DAW, okay, with whatever plugins you want. Uh, another thing to remember is if I bypass all the effects, then I'm going to be bypassing the effects on our send channel here on our reverb channel, okay? So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. Now, you know, I imagine that if you are wanting to output everything natural or raw and you're bypassing all the effects, you won't want this, uh, you know, this aux channel, this send channel anyway. But in case you do, you can output that as well. So I could say the stereo, we'll just do stereo three here and I'll just grab a random channel here and we'll go and set that up right here. And it's three and we'll just hit record right there. Nothing else is playing okay now this channel is only see we have just the snare being sent to that channel okay that just gives us a bit of a, a wider snare sound whenever you have that crack and you have that nice reverb tail uh, come out so that's all this is here Still playing. Let me actually mute that. So that's just the reverb. 
All right. So just be aware if you have channels like that uh, in BFD3 that you want to actually print instead of just making your own reverb send uh, in, well, in this case, Pro Tools, but whatever DAW, uh, you can print those out uh, as well. Just make sure you assign them to some, uh, to some output. You know, in BFD3, we have, you know, some bleed, right? If you don't want that bleed recorded in the actual microphones, you'll need to, you know, trim that off or turn it off. You see when I trigger my snare here, I'm getting some input here on the kick. So, of course, that's going to be recorded on the kick mic if I record those into my DAW. Again, you may or may not want that. So, just you know, keep in mind, you may want to sort of turn that off so you're not going to get that snare bleed into your kick. Completely up to you. Obviously, if you're if you're recording a real drum track with real microphones, you're gonna have bleed everywhere. You know that's that's what recording uh, drums is. Yeah, you can't isolate one microphone when you have all of this sound going on. And then whenever it comes time to mix, that's when you would go in there and maybe put like a gate uh, or something on some of that bleed to sort of bring it down some. So just be aware of your bleed controls here. Before you just go recording and you say, well, I'm, I'm having, there's too much snare in my kick. Well, you need to make sure you set that up properly uh, first so you're not having to re-record things over and over. All right, so now something a bit more difficult to route. You can see this kit here is massive, right? And if you look down here in the mixer, you can see I have all kinds of auxes and sins and all kinds of stuff uh, going on with this kit. So how would you route something like this? Well, this wasn't really meant to be routed. This was sort of meant to be you know, pretty good a sound on its own, but you can route something that's more difficult. You can route everything out as well. You just need to be aware of signal flow. Okay, and that's why I'm showing this here. If we look at our kick, kick aux, kick aux, snare, this is going out to drums. If you come down here, you can see here's our aux, here's drums, here's a parallel compression. You may have some, uh, some presets that, that have parallel compression, so you can output the parallel compression as well. Of course, you have to keep in mind that uh, you need to have those tracks routed correctly uh, so they actually show up in that channel for you to be able to uh, you know split that out actually all right so kick aux the kick two here which of course has extra microphones within it i could route each of these individually to our daw or i could just route just say the kick two uh, channel to the daw i'd probably want mono for that but in this case we have two kicks that are tied together which is sort of a layered sound. So I could put each of these out on their own mono track, right? Or I could come and tap into the aux, the kick aux. Instead of sending that down to our drums, which is way down here, I could send this to, uh, say, a mono output in our DAW. And that would take these two kicks, and I would have all of the effects that I might have on each of these individually, plus whatever I have on the aux. And that would be recorded into our DAW. Okay? But another thing to keep in mind, because this preset is very complex, if you come down here, we're going to have here on the drum aux, well, in this case, we only have a limiter on it. So if I split something off, right, if I split these out here at the kick aux to just mono one, then I'm not going to be getting the sound uh, that I have here in our, uh, in BFD3. I'm not actually going to get that sound because it's going to be uh, split off before it actually goes through the drum bus. And you may have other effects on your master that aren't going to be written to your tracks as well. And that was true for our previous, uh, for our previous preset as well. Now, if you have a bunch of effects on your master, okay, but you're not sending your drums to the master, and then you record into your DAW and say, well, my drums don't even sound close to what they sounded like in BFD3. Uh, even if you maybe, you know, maybe you didn't even have effects on individual channels, right? Maybe you just had a bunch of effects on the master. If you split that out and record it into your DAW, so you're splitting it off before it can actually make it down here to the master, then you get it into your DAW and you say, well, it doesn't sound the same. Well, that's because you split the signal off 
before it hit the master. Okay, does that make sense? Uh, I guess I could show an extreme example of that. Let's go for, let's go for an effect, I guess. We'll go for, say, a phaser here. So phaser's on the master. And right now, let me put this back to our kick aux. And just so we can hear this, I'll put this on. This actually goes to drums right now. I'll just pull that up and destroy that. Right. So right now, our kick aux, our two kicks, which are linked together, are being sent into this kick aux right here. And that's going out to drums, which is down here. Uh, right here. And being fed through this effect. And this ends up going out to the master. Okay, so there's a lot of routing in this. I just want you to uh, you know, be aware of your routing, especially of effects within BFD3, just so you're absolutely certain that you're splitting things off where you want to split them off from. If I play here. Sounds awful, right? Because everything's going through that, through that phaser. So if I were to instead split, say, this kick aux off into, say, mono 1, and we'll just put this right here, and it's already on mono one. We just record that. We'll stop that. Just solo this track. Right? None of that phasers in there, none of those effects that came after the kick aux are, uh, are on there. And again, if you are you know, recording your drums into your DAW, you're probably not going to have a lot of effects on anyway. You may just bypass everything as we already showed, or you may come in here and just turn certain things you know, on or off. But I just wanted to make sure you're aware of your signal flow, because some, you know, some presets are very, very complex. So again, all of these toms here go into this tom aux. I could just say stereo two, set up a stereo channel here and just call it toms and I have all my toms on one on one channel. Again, I won't have individual control over them, but you'll just have one channel uh, for toms, which uh, some people like to mix that way. So that's just uh, sort of a deeper look at, at the signal flow of BFT3 and just make sure you understand what is going where and where you need to split it off. All right, so we'll set up this kit here. Let's go ahead and put our kick. In this case, I'm just going to take the whole kick channel. I'm not going to come in here and get the in, out, and the sub. Although you can absolutely uh, do that if you want. I'll just take this, and we'll put this out mono 1. We'll put our snare out of mono 2. Mono 3 for our hi-hat. We'll take mono 4 for the low tom. And just keep going like this. Now, I don't want my reverb channel printed. Now, for the ambient mix, I could split this out again. I could split this out as one stereo uh, channel, or I could come in here and I could do my overheads. I want those on a stereo, of course, but then on stereo too. Uh, I'm going to turn up my room. I may or may not use it. I don't know. We'll take this out, uh, stereo three, and we'll use this one as well. May not want it, but I might as well print it while I'm at it, right? There. Now these mics, I don't want those. Maybe I want this one though. Take it off mute, and we'll put this out on mono. We'll go with 11. Whatever effects we have on the master, okay, those aren't gonna be printed because we're not going to be recording anything out of there. All right. So we have all of that set up within BFD3. Let's come back here into uh, Pro Tools, rename some things. It's gonna be kick, this is gonna be snare, this is gonna be hats, we have kick on one, snares on two, hats are on three, four, five, this should be six. We want mono, so the M of course means mono, there's six, then symbol two, we have it on mono seven. There's seven. Symbol one is eight. Crash one is 
nine. Then ride one is 10. Good. That's all set up. Come down to our stereo tracks. So we have our overheads on stereo two. We already have that patched up correctly. Make that a little shorter. Our room mics are on stereo three. Again, we already have that set up. Keep in mind, I don't have to use uh, uh, stereo channels for this. If I wanted to, I could use mono tracks and come in here to plug in. And again, BFD three S so stereo O two L. I could choose the you know the left side for this track and then another mono track use the uh, the right side. But we're just gonna go with stereo tracks here. So room mics are set up. Our ambient M three mics is on four, which is already set up correctly. And then we have, what else we have? Then we have one more here, the comp one mic for a, uh, it's a mono track. So I need to create one more mono track right here. This is our comp one mic. There it is. And patch it in correctly here, which is a mono channel. It's 11. So now we have everything set up here to record. I don't need insight on here anymore. And again, before we actually record this, if we want everything raw, we should probably turn those effects off. Okay. And again, you want to keep in mind your sins, but we only have one sin here. But you know, for that uh, previous example we looked at, it was really complex and had a lot of sins on that. So again, just really pay attention to your signal flow. It's not that hard. Just you know, take a good look at it before you go recording. So you don't have to do it over and over and over. All right, so again, in this case, I think we'll just bypass all of the effects. And before we record, I need, let me actually change this over. I put that on the wrong channel. There we go, mono three. All right, so we'll go ahead and make sure I just select the tracks that I want. So all of these here, shift to select all those since they are contiguous. Then I'll hold down alt shift and click the record button that will arm all of those. We have everything set up correctly there now. And let's go ahead and record our drum performance into our DAW. Again, we have effects bypassed. All right, there we go. Close down BFD3. Take that off. Uh, actually, put that back on mute. And uh, Alt click. You get all of those from being armed. All right. All right, now you can see in here that I, you know, I really didn't do much with damping or bleed, uh, you know, for our snare or, or our kick. So we have bleed in here. You know, we're hearing that kick. And that snare track, which is fine, you know, that's something you would get if you actually recorded a drum kit. But again, if you don't want that bleed before you record, come in here to BFD3 and adjust your bleed settings to whatever you want them to be. Maybe you just want to uh, trim it down a bit and maybe you want to turn it completely off. That's up to you. Just again, keep, uh, keep all that in mind. Okay. And of course, which should go without saying, your levels here uh, are going to affect the levels that you record within your DAW. Okay, so if you want it higher, you can, you know, sort of a, a zero all of these out first, if you want, before you actually uh, record anything. Okay, so if you want to zero everything out first, that's absolutely fine too. Just, you know, pay also pay attention to your, your plug-in volume here, because that's going to make a difference as well. All right, but I like to set up a sort of a basic mix first in BFD3. And then, uh, you know, just, it just gives you a little less work later on. And, you know, in Pro Tools, you always have clip gain and volume and compression and whatnot. But if you want to zero everything out, that's absolutely fine, too. So then we can go ahead and mix just like you would a, a real recorded drum kit. If our hats are too loud, maybe pull them down a bit. So our toms, I already had those panned from earlier. It's pretty good there. No cymbal hits in this little piece. Maybe our overheads, let's check those out. Let me turn them down a bit. Okay. And of course, 
which again, something that probably should go without saying is, you know, your, your, you know, I mentioned the overall level already of, you know, of each item here. But of course, you also have the level that's being sent to your, your ambient microphones and your room microphones that you can adjust here as well. Okay. So make sure you have that set up uh, however you want for, you know, the ambient microphone uh, mix that you, that you record. Let's come back down here. Let's check out this. There you go. That's how you would record your drums from BFD3 into your DAW. And then you can mix them with whatever uh, plugins you, you happen to want to mix with. I use a lot of the Isotope plugins when, when mixing. Neutron 2 is a pretty great plugin to mix with for a lot of things. Of course, there's plenty of other plugins that you can mix with there. All right. There we go. I uh, didn't go over here, but you also have an option of export, but we're not really talking about that. You can actually export things, uh, but that's a different uh, different topic. This was about splitting things out from outputs within BFD3 into uh, your DAW. All right, but uh, the export option is uh, pretty neat as well if you want to use that. And lastly, you do not have to record all of the drums uh, at one time, you know, as we showed in this example here, we recorded everything all at once, but then previously we recorded, you know, just a few drums at a time. So that's up to you as well. You know, you can split some things out. You can split all the things out. You can do it, you know, kick and snare and hi-hat, and then maybe do the toms later on. That's completely up to you. You can of course have some things split out and then other things you may want to leave uh, running through BFD3. That's absolutely fine as well. You know, if you want just maybe the kick and the snare uh, coming out to individual tracks, that's fine. You can have everything else within BFD3 and just record all of that uh, down in your, uh, in your final mix. Another thing you can do besides actually recording the tracks, maybe you just want to mix, right? Leave it so BFD3 is still playing everything, right? But you want to use your, your own plugins. So in that case, I could use aux input. I'll just create eight of those, mono in this case. And... Let me just actually go through and mute all of these. So now we have a bunch of aux tracks. And what I could do is I'll just have this set up how it is, which is fine. Uh, our outputs. And we have all of our aux tracks selected. So we'll just go with uh, all selected. Shift control. And we'll just set this up to one. And that will switch all of those for us. So now aux tracks aren't going to actually record audio. I play all right so now what you're hearing is what's coming through bfd3 and that's being split out into our daw and through aux tracks which of course we can't record directly to an aux track everything down here is muted all right so of course we could name these which i'm not going to take the time to do right now but what you could do is if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to sort of mix in real time, let me turn all of our effects off. So we wanted to mix in real time, but not be sort of tied down or take the time to actually print everything because maybe you're not uh, sure yet uh, what you want. You could of course set up aux tracks and you can just use those for mixing. So if I wanted to, I'll just grab a quick EQ plug in here. All right, so then we have our EQ on our kick. And I can sort of mix uh, sort of in real time with, uh, with my own plugins and still have BFD3 spitting everything out. Instead of working from audio, we're still working from uh, the MIDI triggers there. So that's something you might want to uh, consider as well, because maybe you're not quite done with everything. So then I could go through here and add as many plugins as I want 
whatever plugins I want uh, to each of these tracks, set up a mix, and then I could choose to record that or not. You know, you may just want to set everything up with your own plugins without actually recording the audio and putting plugins on them. Although you get some flexibility doing it this way, but of course you get, uh, you know, sometimes there's the problem of too many options, right? If you have too many options and you're continually playing with an arrangement uh, within BFD3, and you don't have anything really committed, it may take you longer to actually get something done. So uh, and, and another plus about actually printing things is then you could, uh, you know, disable this track, make it inactive and free up resources uh, on your system. Now there's one more thing uh, to think about. Uh, this is Pro Tools specific, but other DAWs have it is if you don't want to print everything out in real time like we did by, you know, arming tracks, recording things, some DAWs will let you freeze a track and it will actually respect the outputs that you have and it will print those for you uh, faster than real time, okay? Not really going to cover that here, but that can be an option in, uh, in some DAWs, so just, you know, keep that in mind uh, as well. All right, that was an in-depth look at using multiple outputs in BFD3 and printing those tracks in your DAW.